One of my favorite builds in the Elder Scrolls Online is the Magicka Templar. Not because it's incredibly easy to play, but also because if you play it right, it's basically unkillable. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, HTM here. Time to update one of my favorite builds. This is the Nova Shield Magicka Templar solo build for the Elder Scrolls Online. This build is all about the damage shields, three to four shields, most of them automatically procced based on our sets. And the great thing about this is the sets are either base game or tradable, so this build is incredibly easy to get started with. Like I said, the survivability is through the roof on this one, so this will be great for beginners, or for players who want to take their solo gameplay to the next level and take on more challenging content like dungeons, even veteran dungeons and arenas. Before we dive into that, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. I'm sure you've heard a lot about Raid before. It's the hit mobile hero collection RPG played by over 80 million players worldwide. But let me tell you what's new with Raid right now, and that is Hydra Clash, a new clan-based competition in Raid where you and four other clans see who can smack down powerful new Hydra bosses the fastest. Test your team's skills in combat while earning some amazing loot and even more powerful champions in the process, but it won't be easy. There's six possible Hydra heads you'll have to face off against, each with their own unique abilities and challenges that you'll need to watch out for. Like the Head of Mischief, which steals buffs from your own champions and gives them back to other Hydra heads in battle. Then there's the Head of Torment, which specializes in the True Fear ability to drag down your team, making them lose access to their skills. Or the Head of Suffering, which applies the Pain Link debuff that shares the damage it takes with you and your champions. Whatever strategies you decide to use against the Mighty Hydra, you're going to need to be prepared, and that's why Raid is also currently offering new players the brand new Stag Knight Champion. This is by far one of the best epic champions around, and there's even a skin for Stag Knight designed by YouTube's very own JonTron himself. Just use the promo code JTSKIN before October 7th, and don't worry if you're not a new player, you can still get the Stag Knight and the skin through an in-game event. With all of this and more coming to Raid right now, if you haven't started playing yet, what are you waiting for? New players can use my link or scan the QR code right here to get a free starter pack with all of this amazing in-game loot. Or if you prefer, just hit my link in the description down below to get started. Thanks again to Raid for sponsoring this video, and I will see you on the battlefield. Alright everybody, here we are back on the Magicka Templar. Time to update one of my favorite builds. That is the Nova Shield build. Tons of damage shields and self-healing, like I mentioned in the intro. Pretty much unkillable if you play this right, so let's go ahead and jump into the uh, stats see what we're looking at here so let me buff with a couple things just to look at the stat sheet here so coming in at about 33,000 max magicka 22,000 max health 13,000 max stamina decent magicka recovery at 1600 that will go up you don't see that as much on the stat sheet with the templar because some of the uh, buffs that we have don't really show up in that way about 5k uh, total spell damage this actually will go up uh, about 5400 when we're fully buffed so keep that in mind and about 53 percent 54 percent crit chance is really good talking about the attributes next obviously we want all of our attribute points into magicka this being a magicka templar build that's going to be the best way to do that thief mundus for that juicy crit chance that does help a lot remember with the templar the more damage you do especially those big crit damage jabs the more healing you're going to get back with the uh, puncturing sweep morph, so this is helpful. Then for the food, the uh, gold quality Clockwork Citrus Filet. That is a little bit expensive if you don't want to use that Witch Mother's Potent Brew, totally fine. The only big difference there is the lack of health recovery, which we honestly don't really need with as much shields as we have on this build. In terms of potions, you can run basic Magicka potions on this setup for, you know, very cheap. I will show you how to do that in just a minute when we get to the skills. Uh, but for sort of an optimal version of this build, some type of spell power potion will be best. Either the crafted ones or you can use the alliance spell uh, power potions. These give you magicka recovery, major sorcery, and major prophecy. So those are our main damage buffs. Using those with your potion does free you up a little bit in terms of your skills. So that is nice if you can afford it. 
Uh, and then finally, talking about the race here, many good options on this particular build. I've run this with Breton. I've run this with Khajiit. Currently, I'm using High Elf for this version, and that's basically for the most damage here. We get Elemental Talent for 258 bonus spell damage. We get Cirabane's Boon for 2,000 extra max magicka. And then the Spell Recharge passive does give you some nice... Uh, Sustain back, either Magicka or Stamina, whichever is lowest, and does reduce your damage a bit while channeling, which is perfect for the Templar. Our main damage abilities are channeled abilities, so you are going to take 5% less damage the majority of the time. So sort of ideal for this build, but like I said, Khajiit would be very good. Um, you know, Breton is very good if you're newer to the game, if you're a beginner and you're struggling with Sustain, definitely pick the Breton race, that will help a lot, especially as you're leveling up. I think that covers the basics, so let's jump over to the item sets next. Not much has changed here. Let me uh, start with our first five-piece set, which is called a Prayer Shawl. And if you saw in the intro, the purpose or the whole setup with this build is get as much free damage shields as possible, right? Nova Shield is the name of this build. So Prayer Shawl is kind of a uh, not-so-well-known set. This is a dungeon set from the base game. Gives you a decent-sized shield, about 6k damage absorbed. For six seconds but the reason why i really like this on this particular build is it has the shortest cooldown in the game in terms of shields this effect can occur once every two seconds you see that at the bottom of the tooltip so as soon as this breaks uh, as long as you're maintaining the effect you pretty much are going to get it back very quickly so you have this up all the time it's really nice in that way you can also proc this on allies uh, as well if you want to go with more of a group setup so it is pretty nice and again it is from the base game so no dlcs required for this one decided to run this on the front bar weapon here so i'm using a lightning staff precise is going to be the ideal trait and then the absorb magic enchant does help a lot in terms of sustain i would recommend that as well so remember staff counts for two pieces and then we're just going to run three pieces on the body and this is a light armor set by the way so i've got the light waist the light hands and the light feet. All of those should be divine and then uh, Max Magicka as your enchant. So that's our first five piece set. Nothing has changed there. Again, focused entirely on shields. And we will be combining that with our second five piece set. Probably the best shield set in the game currently, Hexos Ward. This is a Overland set. This does require the Deadlands DLC, but it is tradable as well. So if you don't have that DLC, you can probably find this on Guild Traders fairly easily. The reason why this is good is you can see the shield size there, 14,000 damage shield for 6 seconds. So about 3 times the shield that we see on Prayer Shawl. This does have a longer cooldown, so a 7 second cooldown, uh, but it is much more powerful. So we do want to run this on the jewelry and the body. More jewelry pieces the better, because this is a medium armor set, so if you were to run... 5 medium on a Magicka Templar build, your sustain would suffer a little bit. You wouldn't have as much light armor passives. You could do it, um, but I just prefer to run three pieces of Hexos on the jewelry. So we've got the necklace and two rings. Spell damage enchants there with the extra Magicka recovery is nice. And I did transmute those to Bloodthirsty. If you don't transmute those, the default trait is Robust. That's extra stamina. Not so good on the Magicka Templar, but not, not a huge deal. Uh, Bloodthirsty will definitely help you in the damage department. But this means we just need to run two pieces on the body. So I went with the Hexos Ward legs and the chest. Max Magicka there on the enchants and then of course Divines as the trait. So that's our second five piece set. And then we have a third, yes, a third damage shield set. It's going to be Iceheart again from the base game. Very simple monster set to pick up, but still one of the best in terms of survivability, especially if you like solo gameplay. In ESO, hopefully you have this set already. This gives you bonus crit chance, which is great. And then the 20% uh, chance to gain a damage shield for, again, about 6k damage for 6 seconds. You also deal frost damage, which is pretty nice for the AoE on this particular setup. So you can run this in any weight that you want. I did go with two light pieces. And again, the primary reason is the sustain with the light armor, you get cost reduction for your Magicka skills. You get bonus Magicka recovery. So that does help a little bit on this build. But you could run like a heavy uh, helmet, get even more armor, and then uh, some more stats from the Undaunted Metal passive. So up to you. You could mix up the weights here. I do recommend uh, Max Magicka Glyphs, though, and Divines 
as the trait. So that is pretty much the setup. Of course, you can run a back bar staff, any staff that you want. You can do the prayer shawl staff again for your back bar. You can do a maelstrom staff, pretty much whatever you want here. I went with inferno staff. Uh, that's going to give me better chances of proccing the burning status effect. That's some nice extra damage. You, of course, can go with another lightning staff if you prefer. Not a huge difference because we won't be spending a ton of time on the back bar. It's basically just uh, to recast our dots and then we'll be spending the majority of the time on the front bar uh, lightning staff. Which, by the way, this staff now passively boosts channel damage, which is going to be great for the Templar. So that is the full breakdown. Uh, if you'd like to see the details slot by slot, check the written guide. There's a link in the description. Also have some alternate sets there if you want to boost the damage of this build or if you want more of a uh, beginner friendly approach, there are alternate sets listed in the written guide. Go check those out when you get a chance. Jump quickly into the skills next. Uh, we do have some flexibility in terms of what we're running here, but I'll kind of show you what I'm starting with. So Radiant Glory comes from Dawn's Wrath. This is your execute skill and still very powerful on the Templar. Gives you strong damage over time, also healing back but you need to use this on low health targets. That's when it's most effective. Keep in mind, this is single target. That's kind of different from the rest of our Templar toolkit, which is AOE focused. So if you're just like grinding experience or you're trying to kill enemies, you know, groups of enemies specifically quickly, then sometimes I will swap this out for something that does AOE damage or something that's more defensive. Uh, next up, Barb Trap is very helpful to have on the Magicka Templar. So obviously this gives you the minor force buff, so 10% crit damage, uh, but it's a very strong single target dot and it costs stamina. So it helps a lot with our sustain to have one or two stamina abilities on the bar. That way you're not draining your magicka with every single cast. Uh, next up, we've got Elemental Drain. This comes from the Destruction Staff skill line. This is just a very nice sustain tool. I talked about the sustain is a little bit misleading on the stat sheet because we do get minor Magicka Steel if you run this. There's also more sustain from our Templar Armor buff, uh, but also Major Breach on this. So this is important to cast on bosses. Unless you want to use Caltrops, you could also use Razor Caltrops here for the same type of effect. And then our main damage skill, the bread and butter on the Magicka Templar, is still going to be Puncturing Sweep, still a very strong skill, because this does damage in front of you, and it heals you for a percent of the damage done. So again, the idea of this build... Pump up your shields, run as many shields as possible, and then while you're doing damage, you're constantly healing. So your health bar should basically never move, uh, especially in, in easier content. Finally here, Inner Light, I do recommend running this most cases for the bonus Max Magicka. This comes from the Mages Guild. Now this does give you the same crit chance buff as a Spell Power Potion, so if you combine this with the uh, other version, the other morph of Structured Entropy, which is Degeneration, that gives you major sorcery, so you can get your 20% damage, your bonus crit chance from both of these mages guild abilities, and you can run any potion you want. So that's a good way to save some gold on cheaper potions if you prefer. But either way, I would run Inner Light, because it does pump up your max magicka as well, and that's going to be a little bit low, especially if you're running bloodthirsty jewelry. Uh, finally, for the front bar ultimate, you can run anything that you like here. I've got Flawless Dawnbreaker. Just as like a quick casting, low cost ultimate, this is nice. The fight's about to end, but you want to put out some extra damage. You can use this. Uh, you could even run the other morph of this for a stun. That's going to be really nice for more challenging content. Uh, but yeah, you can also run the uh, some of the Templar ultimates if you prefer there. Let's check out our back bar now, which again, it's going to be focused more on dots and buffs. Keeping it really simple. So Solar Barrage from Dawn's Wrath. This does magic damage every two seconds. Has a nice long duration. Also gives you Empower, which is great on the Templar. You can mix in some Empowered Heavy attacks on this build for the uh, sustain, but also pretty solid damage. That is nice. We also have another AoE damage over time. Ritual of Retribution. This comes from Restoring Light. So I'm using the damage morph here. Very good damaging effect here. Also a nice long duration. And then, of course, we've got the Destruction Staff AoE dot. That's going to be Blockade. Uh, blockade to Fire in this case because we are running the uh, Fire Staff on the back bar. You can mix it up and run a Lightning Staff. You'll get Blockade of Storms for extra chances to proc off balance. Again, that's up to you. That depends on what staff you're running on the back bar. But the main reason we're doing this, uh, and I think I actually forgot to mention it in the item set. So let me just show you. 
Back bar staff, you always want to run infused for the most part with the weapon and spell damage glyph. Sometimes that's also called a berserker glyph. This gives you a ton of bonus uh, damage pretty much with 100% uptime. So as long as you're casting your wall of elements, keeping that and damaging enemies with it, you will get that bonus damage uh, from the glyph. So that's really important. And then just two buffs on the back bar, Structured Entropy. I use this more as a pull skill, so to pull in enemies uh, because it will aggro them and then also give you a very solid heal, 1330 every two seconds. This heal, by the way, procs our uh, damage shield from Prayer Shawl. It can also proc your damage shield from Hexos Ward and Ice Heart at the same time. So you can have all of that stuff up and running before uh, the enemy even gets close to you. So that's nice. You can also cast this on multiple targets and you will uh, duplicate that heal for every target you cast it on. So uh, if you know like ads are going to start coming in, get them in your target, cast this on them and tons of healing will come in from that. And then finally, our uh, last buff here, channeled focus comes from restoring light. That's our last buff here. We get our armor, major resolve. We also get good magicka recovery, 242 every one second. That doesn't show up on the stat sheet as we saw. Uh, but also some nice healing if you're standing in the rune. So make sure to, to come back to that rune when it's on the ground, just to make use of that. Uh, in terms of the back bar ultimate, this is going to be your ult dump in terms of this is what you want to cast to do the most damage to uh, as many targets as possible. So Solar Disturbance I like to use for more challenging fights. This doesn't do as much damage, but the major maim here is a nice debuff. It reduces all enemies' damage by 10%. That can definitely save you uh, if an ad wave comes or enemies are just hitting you super hard, you will reduce that damage by quite a bit. But for easier content, or if you just want to burn through things quicker, like in solo arenas, for example, then I would use uh, Elemental Rage from the Destruction Staff. This is going to do much more damage. Uh, but let me put, uh, let's go back to Solar Disturbance here. A couple other skills you could run, probably more on the front bar. Uh, like I said, Radiant Glory doesn't help you if there's lots and lots of enemies around. So you can substitute something more defensive. I do like, uh, let's see. I do like Radiant War just to give us a fourth damage shield. Uh, this is going to scale up the more enemies that hit us. So that's going to be very good for defense. You can also run the uh, updated skill Explosive Charge uh, or the other morph of this. This is getting updated in update 39, you can see to give you major protection for 10 seconds on this morph. So if you want on-demand major protection, that's 10% uh, damage reduction. That's, that's pretty nice because the Templar gets minor protection from their uh, Templar passive. So you can actually get both pretty easily on this build. But I'll put the uh, shield here for now so we can check out the rotation. Okay, so let's do a quick showcase on the rotation. If you want to try this yourself... Uh, here's where I'm at. I'm in the zone of Rivenspire, so base game. Veil Guard Tower is a great world boss to test out your build. Just because there's a lot of damage that comes in. There's several adds that hit very hard. So if you can survive this, uh, then you know your build is in good shape. But in terms of the starting buffs here, we talked about using that spell power potion, if that's how you're running it. And then really just use your armor buff. And then we're going to do all of our back bar dots. So I'll use uh, all of those. Swap to the front bar, I can use my shield or not if I need it. And then our trap, our armor buff. And you're gonna do sweep maybe six or seven times uh, until those back bar buffs and dots are low. Swap back and then rebuff. So very simple in terms of the basic rotation. You can see now I've got multiple adds here. So I'm gonna get that uh, structured entropy. I'm gonna use my front bar shield a little bit more. Make sure trap is still down. Not sure if it went down. Yep, there it is. Okay, and I'm gonna do a heavy attack. Just one for some extra sustain and use my potion. Got some adds here. So I'm gonna use my ult right now. Rebuff, front bar shield, no worries. And then just sweeps. Take care of business. I'll throw in another heavy attack here. Stay calm. Here's another ad wave, so shield up again. Rebuff on the back bar. Shield again. Sweeps. Sweeps is going to take care of all the enemies and it's going to keep my health topped off. And again, you can use that shield as you need to. 
rebuff trap here. I lost some of my dots on the back bar, so let me make sure those are down. Debuff the boss. I don't think I need my shield anymore. Just gonna do sweeps, try to get both enemies here at once if I can. Use that front bar ult, why not? And then finish things off. Super easy. All right, let's jump into champion points next. As usual, you can find the full breakdown of CP in the written guide. I'll have 300, 600, 900, and 1200 break points there. So there's pretty much some help for whatever level range you are in. Green tree honestly does not change much. We've got the basics here. So treasure hunter, rationer, liquid efficiency, and steed's blessing are my slotted stars. For the blue tree slotted stars, I'm using thaumaturge, biting aura, We've got Fighting Finesse and then Wrathful Strikes. And for the Red Tree, I am using Rejuvenation, Fortified, Boundless Vitality, and Bastion. Bastion is going to be very important on this build because it increases your damage shield effectiveness by 15%. So since we are running 3 to 4 shields on this build at all times, you're going to get a lot of bonus from this star. You can even probably put this on first uh, to get the most benefit if you are lower in your uh, CP rank. And then of course we can look at the armor styles if you're curious about this particular look. Uh, these are all light armor, I believe. And so the style here is called Blessed Inheritor and that's from the Balsinar dungeon. All right, everybody, and with that said, that is going to wrap up this updated build video for the Nova Shield Magicka Templar solo build for the Elder Scrolls Online. Hope this was helpful for you. If it was, make sure to crush that like button. It absolutely helps the channel. It lets YouTube know to share this video with others, so it is much appreciated. If you're new around here, you can subscribe as well for more ESO builds, guides, and updates. And if you'd like to support the channel further, check out our channel membership, which adds tons of great content to what we already have here, including members-only builds and guides, a great community on Discord, and much more. Information on that is in the Join button. You can click that down below. As always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there, and I will see you around in the next video.